As we know by now, it's a misconception that people are born with or without creative ability. It's still alarming, however, that some people believe that creativity means just being good at art. Of course, this is incorrect. Creativity is about being able to think. Creativity can absolutely be a learned behaviour. It can be taught and developed. Pushing yourself just beyond your comfort zone will embolden you to go further of your own volition. You will be presented with complex problems that you need to solve in both professional and personal arenas. Approaching both types of problems with the creative eye is likely to garner innovative solutions. Imagine that you've just been tasked with establishing more green spaces in a metropolitan city, or that you've been asked to ensure equitable global access to a life-saving vaccine. Where would you begin? Using a creative thinking process known as design thinking will help you to identify the steps to develop innovative solutions, and that's what this lesson is all about. The design thinking process requires individuals and teams to first develop empathy in order to understand the needs of the people or organisations for whom they need to design a solution. Using this human-centric approach, they then work on critical thinking by defining the problems and opportunities for designing solutions. The next stage is the generation of ideas, and lots of them, followed by the development of prototypes, which can be models or storyboards, for example. These prototypes are then tested and feedback is sought. This is a reflective and solutions-based approach, which is iterative and non-linear. You can go back and forth to any stage of the process at any point in order to refine your ideas. And redesign is desirable in this design thinking process. You're encouraged to think out loud, listen to others and create multiple solutions based on need. Design thinking is a social process which demands courage, collaboration and develops resilience. You would create multiple ideas, some will be reasonable and some will be fantastical. This is to be celebrated as you will develop creative confidence. And this is something that we have in abundance as toddlers, but gradually ebbs away if not cultivated. It's not too late to begin to cultivate this again now. Developing empathy will give you the human edge in a world dominated by AI. You will become more optimistic and able to contribute positively to solving real world problems, whether these are professional or personal. Only by making creativity a daily habit can you adopt such competencies as inherent. It's important to think about problems that you have to solve as a combination of myriad disciplines rather than viewing the world in silos of academic subjects, separate business disciplines such as marketing and finance, or separate relationships. Instead, try to identify the interconnected nature of seemingly unconnected issues. So let's recap. Design thinking has five key stages or phases. The first is empathy, followed by the definition of the problem to be solved. Once this has been done, the design thinker or team moves towards the ideation or brainstorming phase, which is followed by prototyping and then testing the solution to the problem. Each phase can be revisited at any point, so it's important not to think of design thinking as a rigid process of stages. So for example, we could consider a real-world problem of protecting and developing farming and agriculture as they form the basis of economies in several developing countries. The first stage would be to conduct interviews and research to understand the point of view of the key stakeholders. We would then look closely at weather patterns, employment figures and the political leadership of relevant countries. We may consult reports from NASA that provides us with an understanding of the interconnected nature of space and Earth, and then we can accurately target our problem solving to a collection of defined issues. The ideation phase would follow, and we might look at something like predictive technologies to help farmers and governments plan. These technological solutions can provide data about soil conditions, crop yields and rainfall, which could be synchronised with machines used in fields to completely automate the farming process, reducing the dependency on manual labour. We would then keep circling back to our empathetic understanding from the first stage of the design thinking process to ensure that we are on track. We could then explore the possibility that such space technology could help to solve other real-world problems, such as using satellite imagery to identify mass atrocities, for example, or to enable governments to detect illegal fishing and shipping piracy, or small, low-cost satellites to provide complete Wi-Fi for the whole world, thus reducing inequitable access to the internet. This will help us to understand that the world does not operate in discrete subject areas, but instead is defined by its interconnected nature and the domino effect of innovation in multiple areas of life. 
This idea of interconnection and relationships is covered in a later lesson on systems thinking. Once we have a collection of ideas, we would then evaluate them to identify which are worth moving forward with. We could use a SWOT analysis for this, or a dot voting process with the option with the most dots being the winner. Now we have one viable solution. It's economically viable, desirable from a human point of view, and technologically feasible. So now we can move forward to the next phase. We can prototype this by storyboarding the idea to identify the journey or flow of how the idea will work and its impact along its journey. If you were designing a product, this is where you would create a rudimentary prototype model of the solution. The idea then needs to be tested and feedback sought from users and other stakeholders. The idea will likely need iteration and the previous steps of empathy, definition, ideation and prototyping can be revisited at any point. This is not a linear process and it can feel a bit messy, but it's important to be reflective throughout the process to arrive at a tested, effective and acceptable solution. One design thinking strategy that you can use to get to the heart of the issue that needs to be solved is the five whys exercise. The five whys technique was developed and fine tuned within the Toyota Motor Corporation as a critical component of its problem solving training. The basis of Toyota's scientific approach is that by repeating why five times, the nature of the problem as well as its solution becomes clear. So here's an example from Toyota of the five wise technique. So they start with the question, why did the robot stop? And the answer is, the circuit has overloaded, causing a fuse to blow. So why is the circuit overloaded? And the answer is, there was insufficient lubrication on the bearings, so they locked up. But why was there insufficient lubrication on the bearings? Well, the oil pump on the robot is not circulating sufficient oil. Why is the pump not circulating sufficient oil? The pump intake is clogged with metal shavings. Why is the intake clogged with metal shavings? Because there is no filter on the pump. And you can see there that asking these five why questions gets to the heart, the root of the problem that needs to be solved. Asking questions is a simple route into critical thinking, creativity, communication and collaboration. Say you were presented with a real-world problem of tackling food insecurity. Using the five whys technique, a conversation could go like this. So why is there food insecurity in the world today? Well, the primary cause of food insecurity is poverty. Why is there poverty in the world? Lack of access to quality education is the primary reason why people still live in poverty. Without an education, a person may struggle to get a good job or launch a successful career. This means that they may struggle to meet their basic human needs, especially without government assistance. So why is there a lack of access to quality education? One of the main reasons is persistent inequality and marginalisation of certain groups of people. Why does this inequality and marginalisation exist? Well, the roots of this can be found in gender inequality in some parts of the world. Why is there gender inequality in the world? One reason is the legal impediments to women undertaking economic activities. What this approach highlights is that while quick fixes to problems such as food insecurity may seem convenient, such as increasing agricultural output, they often solve only the surface issues and fail to get to the root cause that could otherwise be tackled to help solve the original problem. If you're not asking why repeatedly until you get to the nub of the issue, you may solve the wrong problem or solve nothing at all. To be a creative thinker, you need to be adversarial and challenge perceived facts, assumptions and perceptions. So we've come to the end of this lesson on design thinking, so let's recap the stages we've covered. So firstly, we begin with the human at the centre. We consider their needs, their point of view. We ask questions, observe and gather information. And then this helps us to define the problem to be solved, rather than assuming that we know what the real problems are. We can use the five whys technique to help us get there. The next stage is the ideation or brainstorming stage. And here we want quantity over quality. We can then move to the prototype stage where we may build a basic model or create a visual understanding of the journey of the solution in action. Next, we gain feedback in order to test our chosen solution. And then finally, we can go back to any of the previous stages at any point to help us refine and clarify our thinking.